Hi everyone, welcome to Math Moment with Mr. Dustin. I'm Mr. Dustin. So today we'll be discussing surface area and volume. Now this concept is generally introduced in a high school geometry course, so ninth or 10th grade, depending on the curriculum. However, if you have um, learned about area, this would be a good concept to go over, just because it connects to area and they're kind of similar. And so if you're older or younger, this could be a great review or preview. And in the description below, there is a link to a formative assessment and at the end of the form of assessment, there's a code you can enter for a virtual visitor badge. So I encourage you to take that formative assessment and earn the badge. So yeah, enjoy the video. All right, so today we'll be discussing surface area and volume. Now these two concepts deal with three-dimensional shapes. Before we've gone over uh, like squares, circles, triangles, and those are two-dimensional shapes. Well, this will make them 3D. So now we're dealing with rectangular prisms, cylinders, cones, and um, pyramids. And so what surface area does is it takes the shape and it flattens it. And so you can see all the sides at once on the ground. I have a picture of one right here. This is taking a pyramid and flattening it so you see all of the sides. And what surface area does is it calculates the amount of space that's in each of these sides, each face, um, to use the terminology for the three-dimensional shape. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take each of these shapes and figure out you know, how much space is on the outside, like how much can you see. Volume is what calculates the amount of space inside. And so the main difference between surface area and volume is surface area is in two dimensions. So your units will be units squared and volume is in three dimensions. So it'll be in units cubed. And so let's take a look at some of these shapes and figure out what the surface area and volume is. And for simplicity, I just give you the formulas to use. And I'll kind of explain the significance of them as we go. And so the surface area of a rectangular prism is two times the length times width plus height times length plus height times width. And so you can see in this image, it labels length, width, and height. And we can see that in our example down here with the numbers. 10 is the length, three is the width, and four is the height. So this makes sense, right? Because you could say four times 10 gets me the area of this one side right here. And then three times 10 gets me the area of this bottom piece. And four times three gets me the area of a side piece. And now that makes three sides that remain and so you have to multiply each of those by two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them all into the formula now. We'll do two times three times 10 plus four times 10 plus four times three. At this point, I would recommend using your calculator to find out what this is. I'm going to just give you the answer here. 164 inches squared. So that is our surface area of the rectangular prism. And all I did was I just put the appropriate um, lengths, widths, and heights you know, into the formula, just as it says up here, and calculated it. Um, so that's all you'll have to do for this too. And once you know the formula, you can calculate any of these. So volume of the rectangular prism is gonna be length times width times height. This one's much easier. So what you'll do is you'll just do the length, which is um, 10, times the width, which is 3, and the height, which is 4, and that equals 120 inches cubed. And that is our volume. So now you can see how these formulas are applied, and that's pretty much all we're going to do for the rest of the shapes, too. Um, and so Let's move on to cylinders. Now, cylinders are obviously a little different. Um, you can tell you know, they have like the circular format. And so you may be wondering, well, how does this actually translate um, to a flat shape? Well, you have a cylinder top right here, and then you have the bottom of the cylinder here. Now, these are both circles. And then when you unroll this middle section, you're actually going to get a rectangle. Now, excuse the bad drawing there, but this is kind of the idea behind like a flattened cylinder. 
And so what this formula here does is it takes two pi r times h. Now, r is the radius and h is the height. If you, you'll notice that the length of this side here is the height. And then the length of this side here is actually the circumference of the circle on the top. So the two pi r gets me the circumference and then you multiply it by the height, which will get you the you know, area of a rectangle here. And then you have two pi r squared. And so pi r squared is obviously the area of a circle. And since there are two of them, we multiply it by two. So that is why this formula works for a cylinder. Now, to actually calculate this, we're gonna use the example at the bottom here with r being eight and h being 15. And so I'm just gonna plug everything into the formula. Let's see, I'm gonna copy pi real quick so that you can see pi there, okay. So it'll be two times pi times eight times 15 plus two times pi times eight squared. And that will, in the end, get us 1,156.106 centimeters squared. Now, obviously, there's you know, there's some calculations that need to go along with that, and I invite you to do that on your calculator. Just for time's sake, I just show you the formula and then plug it all in, and you can do the rest with your calculator if you'd like. And so let's look at volume of the cylinder. The volume is pi times the radius squared times the height. And notice, this makes sense, right? Because pi r squared, remember, is the area of a circle. And now we want to know how many circles are actually going to fit into this thing. And so to find that out, you multiply it by the height because that'll tell you how many circles fit into the, into the cylinder here. It's like stacking a bunch of circles on top of each other. So that is why we multiply this by h. And that's what sets it apart from your area of a circle. So if we plug our values in, we're going to say pi times the radius, which is 8 squared times 15, and that will get us 3,015.929 centimeters cubed. Now, oftentimes, uh, we may see it left in like the pi format. So what this means is we just didn't multiply pi like by the estimate, the 3.14, et cetera, um, part of pi. What we did is we left it in um, like the form eight squared times 15 times pi. So eight squared is 64 and then multiply it by 15, you get 960 and then we just tack on a pi right there. Both of these answers are acceptable. Um, and you may see on the formative ass assessment um, that goes both ways. So just keep that in mind. I would multiply all the numbers first, and then if you don't see that answer with a pi on it, multiply by the estimate of pi. So the 3.14 um, or the 22 over seven, however you like to do that with pi. So that, that is the cylinder. And we're gonna go into a break now. And when we come back, we will look at pyramids and cones. So enjoy the break. All right, so for the break today, I decided to calculate the volume of our back book drop here. And so I treated it as a rectangular prism where I just measured the length, the width, and the height. And so I found the length. Let's see if we go like this. Length is about 22 inches. And the width, we just kind of go like this, was about 36 inches. And then the height going like this, was about 19 inches. And so, let's see, I'll put my calculations up here. I multiplied them together at the bottom there and got 15,048 inches cubed. So that's a lot of room for books to be returned. And I also took the liberty of calculating the one out front too. 
and that ended up being 12,584 inches cubed. And so we actually have two of these big ones in the back here. So really this number is closer to 30,000 and we also have two of them out front. So that's really more like 25,000 um, inches cubed. So there's a lot of room for books. That's basically what I learned um, doing this. And yeah, so that is volume. And it was an interesting application here. And you can do this at home too. You can you know check on uh, rectangular prisms at your house or pyramids, or cylinders or cones and try to calculate the volume yourself. You might be surprised at how much space you actually have. Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the break. Let's move on to some other shapes now. We have square pyramids. And so the surface area of a square pyramid, uh, the formula is very complicated and it involves like the A and the H, you know, as labeled on the figure here. So we're not gonna use that. I will actually put a net like this on the formative assessment. And so what you'll end up doing is just calculating the area of each individual part and adding them together. So for example, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the area of all the triangles. You can see there are four of them here. So remember the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. Well. This side would be a base, or this side even, you know, it would be a base, and then the height is this dotted line here. So you could say four times six, which we know is 24, divided by two is 12. So the area of this triangle right here is in fact 12. However, there are four of the triangles. So we can multiply that by four and know the area of all four triangles. So that would be 48. Now, there's a one last piece of it here, the, the square portion. So that is four times four, which is 16. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say area of the triangles is 48 centimeters squared. And then we'll say area of the square is, 16 centimeters squared. All you have to do at this point is just add them together and that will get you the surface area of the um, square pyramid here. So that would be 64 centimeters squared. And that's all there is to the surface area of the pyramid here. A lot of the time you will get it in this format and it's easier to visualize this way because uh, you can see all the parts that you have to calculate the area for. And if you remember back earlier on, you were given shapes that maybe had like the, the square in the middle here, but it also had like a triangle attached to it. And you know how to find this area? Well, you just, you add this and this together. You add both of the pieces. And that's basically the same idea that we're trying to apply right here. Now, the volume of a um, square pyramid is not quite as complicated as the surface area, at least in terms of the formula. You basically take A, which is you know this uh, side length here on the bottom. So you do A times A times the height divided by three. And so this is kind of similar to the area uh, problem of a you know of a triangle uh, because you do you know base times height divided by two. Well, this is essentially base times base times height divided by three. So again, a similar thing, but not exactly you know, the same. And so what we'll do is we'll say two times two times three divided by three gets us four centimeters square cubed. And so that is the volume of the uh, square pyramid. And you can see, you know, three divided by three gets you one. So really it's two times two times one. And you know that to be four. So that's all there is to the volume here. If you just follow this formula, you'll be fine with the square pyramid. And obviously with this one, you'll want to know the side length or the, the triangle height here. So that would be like this portion right here. So this height is different from the height that's in the middle here. So that's a good thing to remember when you have a square pyramid. However, you can find this height right here. If you know this part, 
and this part, the two dotted parts, because you can just use the Pythagorean theorem to find the, the height of the you know, triangle. And that's by use of something you already know. And these form a triangle, and that's why you can use it. So let's move on, move on to cones. Now cones are the most complicated of our shapes that we have here right now. And you can see this format here for the, the volume, or not the volume, the surface area of this cone is very complicated. Um, and partially because I can't use certain characters like a square root sign. And so the square root of the height squared plus the radius squared is reminiscent of the Pythagorean theorem. If you notice, the height right here and the radius right here form a triangle with this line right here. And so that's kind of the idea by having a square root of the height squared plus the radius squared, because it's like a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you'll notice if you do the square root of a squared plus b squared, you get c. And so that's kind of the idea behind that. The rest of it just has to do with you know fitting in like the, the area of the circle underneath and kind of the rest of the shape. And so what we're going to do is all you have to do really is just plug in the values that you know into the formula. So we have pi times the radius r, which is 4, times, let's see, the radius again, 4 plus the square root of h squared. Now h squared is going to be 8 squared. Let's see, we'll use parentheses here. 8 squared. No, 8 squared. Plus the radius squared, which will be 4 squared. And that all comes out to be 162.663 inches squared. Now, obviously, this was a complicated formula and doing it by hand would take a long time. So the best thing to do is plug it into your calculator. The first thing that you'll want to do when solving this is calculate 8 squared and 4 squared and then add them together. So what that gets us is the square root of 80, which is easier to work with than the square root of 8 squared plus 4 squared. And so you want to just evaluate the square root portion first and take care of parentheses, really, um, and then exponents, obviously. And so it's the order of operations. And yeah, just kind of working your way through that. But this is the final answer. And on the formative assessment, you'll have the, all the same measurements that we were given right here. So all you have to do is plug it into this formula again, and it should be fairly straightforward. Now, the volume of a cone is a little easier to work with. You have pi times the radius squared times the height over 3. Now, this is similar to a cylinder, actually, because we noticed that you know, pi r squared times the height is the cylinder volume. But there's obviously less space, right? If I were to you know, basically extend this out like that, look at that. It's a cylinder again, kind of. Um, obviously, my drawing isn't exactly on point for the cylinder. There we go. And so that's why we have to divide by three. It compensates for the uh, volume that's missing from the actual cylinder. So what we're going to do is we're going to say pi times radius, which is four squared times the height, which is eight, then divide it by three. And that gets us 134. Point zero four one inches cubed. Again, if you happen to see an answer with a pi on it, don't use the estimate for pi quite yet. Multiply all the numbers first and see what you get. And then you can you know, use the estimate for pi to get to this more specific answer here. So that is all for uh, surface area and volume. There are obviously many other shapes that you can work with in three dimensions, like spheres or uh, triangular prisms, but these are the most common that you'll see, and they're kind of uh, fundamental to, you know, the rest of them, I guess. And so uh, I figured for time's sake, 
you know, we would just work with these four. And so there is a formative ass or assessment you can um, work on. There is also a code at the end of the formative assessment that you can enter for a virtual visitor badge. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and enjoy the rest of your day.